that. I'm a white fat guy with some facial hair. And I'm going to answer the question, is this overproof rum as good as this barrel proof bourbon? No, no, it's not. It's not. This is 80 bucks. This is 30 bucks. Like they're not even in the pr same price range. Like, like there's no, there's no sense in even like comparing the two in any meaningful way. I mean, it's just, where, where's that sort of lounge jazz coming from? It's, oh, I'm sorry. And this is, um, I accidentally made my, my channel more commercial there for a second. Anyways, I'm literally going to take this off the table because there's no point comparing it. Um, given the difference in, in price range, um, if you thing is, if you were looking to compare this uh, $30 for a liter monster to uh, a bourbon of some kind, a barrel proof bourbon, you wouldn't be able to find one for around $30. Um, if you go up to 40, you can start to see them trickle in. You've got uh, uh, the Maker's Mark one. You've got a couple of MGD ones, which are like two years old, um, which none of, none of these I'm particularly fond of. Happily, there is a much better option for comparison um, that is around the $38 mark. This is um, Old Grandad 114. Um, I love this stuff. And uh, uh, so it's not, it's not barrel proof, but it's about as close as you can get for 30 bucks. This is from the um, Jim Beam sort of high rye, rye mash bill range, including some other wish, uh, whiskeys um, of which we will not talk about. Um, and so uh, I, think it's, I think it's fair to compare these two, both 30 bucks, right? This is a little bit more, but you're also getting a full liter. The thing is, um, I want to throw in one more uh, uh, curveball to this, this little matchup, and it's not 30 bucks. Um, this is Ray and Nephew, overproof, um, uh, unaged rum. And uh, so if you're coming from the bourbon world, you're, you're looking at this and thinking, wait, wait, sort of unaged rum? Isn't that going to be sort of gross and super harsh? No, because uh, rum has certain advantages over grain spirits because um, uh, they don't have the same kind of off notes when they come off the still that you need to get rid of by aging, uh, aging it. It actually comes off the still fairly pleasant, especially if it's well made. And you might still say, well, I mean, if it's never seen the inside of the barrel, I mean, I mean, my God, it's not, it's not going to taste like a bourbon. And to that, I can, I can just say like, just go buy some fucking bourbon. I mean, Jesus, it's, it, there's plenty of them. Go, go pick one. Um, if on the other hand, you're looking for sort of alternatives, uh, and you, you're not sort of hoping that something you know, is, was randomly misfiled in the wrong section and happens to be a bourbon, even though it isn't, um, you know, maybe you want to expand your horizons a little bit. So let's, uh, let's try these things. I made some fresh notes on the, uh, OGD, um, last night. Um, I don't have the notes for these other guys in front of me, but, um, I did review them before. So, you know, it, it'll be fun to, uh, oh, Jesus. That's a lot. This is a little bit hard to hold, actually. Um, universal design, guys. Um, and, uh, oh, here's my other glass. A little bit of uh, our Ray and Nephew here. That's, that's plenty. Actually, more than plenty. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, run through these once without water, add a splash of water. Um, see how they get on, and then give them a score, and we'll talk a little bit. Um, all right, so starting off with the uh, Plantation, OFTD, Plantation is due for a, a um, rebranding because, you know, they're called Plantation. Wait. Um, I'm organized. Um, bottled at 69% alcohol, um, uh, no indication of age. But young, but it's been smacked with a hell of a lot of active oak. Um, on the nose. I mean, it just it just smells like kind of dried fruit and ash. Um, you're sort of getting it's um. Uh, I mean, if you've never had uh, like French oak before, this can be a little bit of a shock. And this is like really 
Like they feel it feels like they just charged the hell out of a bunch of French oak barrels to make this. Um, yeah, sort of dried dried cherries, dried orange. Um, it's kind of wood smoke, wood ash. Um, it's really the sort of um, Barbados component, the Bajan rum, that's uh, that's up front here. Although it, it also contains components from uh, Jamaica and uh, Guyana, but those are really they're not they're not sort of you you don't sense them independently. They're really just kind of pushing up the uh, the Bajan component. Um, it's about, it's 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 a little cough syrupy. Um, Little little uh, little Christmas spice, little clove, um, little cinnamon, but uh, very dominated by sort of ashy notes. Um, touch of like something metallic in there, like a kind of rusty aluminum-y note on the palate. Yeah. Ooh. 69 proof. 69% alcohol. Um, incidentally, so parentheses, the, the term overproof in rum is kind of meaningless these days. You do see it uh, put on there. It's kind of, it does have a meaning, but it's the context has kind of been lost. So British proof is different from American proof, right? It's not like you times the percentage, percentage times, times two. British proof is gunpowder proof. Um, it's 57% alcohol. Anything north of that is overproof. Um, and nothing else qualifies you, even if it's, you know, so even if it's just a little bit higher than, than, you know, the normal 40% alcohol, if it's not about 57%, um, it's, it's not overproof in the strict sense. So this, this guy, for example, is at proof in the, in the British system. Just a fun fact. Um, anyways, back to this. Kind of the same thing. Oh cough syrup short actually short in the mouth um lots of sort of ashiness and you know more dried fruit up front it's, it's a little sort of um like a, a cognac had a bad day like a like you got into a fight with a cavossier with, with a with a knife um, um um dried fruit ash um quite dry but again short in the mouth um and very hot due to the not hot. Um, well, yeah. Okay. There's there's some black pepper in here, which is more of, more of the heat kind of note, but the alcohol nip is also pretty pretty prominent on this. Um, let me give it one more shot. I will say from past experiments with this, it does not like water very much. It benefits from being taken down to about nine to one hundred proof, or so. But if you go any further south than that, it'll just disintegrate on you. Um, so. I'm going to be very judicious in the amount of water I add. Let's say like four squirts. Doesn't need any more than that. Okay, moving on to the, um, this is the bourbon, the OGD. This is, um, of course, from, from uh, Kentucky. Oh, I forget the town. Where the hell is the, the bean distillery? Frankfurt, sorry. Um, this is probably about four years old, although it's it's only marked straight, so there could be younger components in this. Um, um, and uh, it's a high rye mash bill. It's 57% alcohol. Here we go. Um, the, the leading note is actually such sort of like overstewed Lipton's tea. Um, like just autumn leaves, like... Um, you know, leaves that have hit the floor, some 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 acorns mixed in there, um, some like sourdough bread, just San Francisco sourdough, um, cracked black pepper, but lots of lots of tea, lots of sort of leaves and twigs, um, and sort of some vegetal notes mixed in with some some more desserty notes. It's like you you took a like a French vanilla milkshake, and you put some like some dill into it. Um, it's kind of nice. Um, maybe some some like um, not coconut itself, but take the coconut shell, toast the inside a little bit. That's kind of what this smells like. Uh, a little little wood glue, a little um, 
like classic amber ale. Like not, we're not talking California stuff with the crazy hops. We're, this is the sort of old school English style. Uh, almond butter, a sort of honeydew honey note, you know, like the really bitter honey that's that's kind of great for cooking if you've ever, if you've never tried it. Um, yeah, it's it's a the alcohol's probably getting in the way a little bit, but that'll the water will help with that. Um, nice. Let's let's um, give it a shot on the palate. Obviously, very nippy. Ooh, very dry. Just coats the whole mouth. Covers the whole mouth. Much better than this guy. Um, big hot rusty um tea tannins that, that lipton thing again um dill again that's there's a, there's a kind of like hot paprika note like a like a hungarian spicy paprika um a little little um little creamed corn little coconut shavings oh and like a juniper note there's a little bit of like Someone dumped some, um, you know, some beef eaters into the barrel. Um, that's nice. I think that's a rye coming through. Um, a little like Baltic black bread, you know, the, the serious um, uh, rye sourdough they make down there, or oh, over there, I should say. Kind of like. Just some old furniture, like you're licking old furniture. Um, the tea is dominating. The, the tannins are huge. Um, there's a, and a little bit of like a, what the wine nerds call forest floor. Like it's a you know it's a, it's the fall right now. You go outside, scoop up some leaves and twigs, and you just you just throw them in your mouth, your mouth and chew on them. There's a little bit of that going on. Um, okay, um, quite dry, quite tannic. Um, but if you're a bourbon fan, you're gonna you're gonna love this. So what I'm gonna do. Let's add a little, little, little water to it. See how it opens up, because the nose in particular is is, is pretty closed um, right now. Okay, on to the Ray and Nephew. This is about twenty to twenty-five bucks retail, so less expensive than these guys by, you know, percentage-wise a lot. Um, you can find this pretty much anywhere. This is a. Uh, uh, I won't get too technical, but but it's it's from Jamaica. It's a blend of column still and pot uh, uh, pot still rum. Um, um, it has a reputation as, as a little bit of a monster, but it's really due to the strength. This is actually quite subtle from my experience with it. And every time I, I nose this, I get a little bit surprised by just by what it's doing. Um, very delicate. This is like um. The best I can do is take some take some root vegetables, right? Like some some really green potatoes, like some some new potatoes, you know, and saute them up with like some some rock candy, something like that. Um, but then it's also a little bit floral. It's but um, like pressed flowers, um, a little like a little like black licorice. Not not the nice kind. This is more like you know black Twizzlers. Um, a little little bit of plantain like underripe plantain this is not fruity this is more like vegetables and candy more than than, than actual fruit um, white pepper a little little hint of like um, like allspice a little lemon like lemon cake uh, No, it's like it's like um oh, Jesus. It's it's very ethereal. It's um I mean throw some sort of some olive juice and a little bit of brininess in there, but it's all mixed together with these sort of nice candy notes. It's it's really fun and interesting if you're coming to it from you know anywhere else in the booze world. Um on a palette. Again, alcohol nip, Ooh. but it's the cane that comes first. You're getting cane juice, you're getting sort of that grassiness. Um, 
you're getting again rock candy and and some some sort of root vegetation thing going on um but it's also very spicy and again it like this it kind of covers the mouth but it's not as tannic it's not a sort of drying it doesn't have the wood on it right um very cinnamony um licorice more like more like salted old school licorice this time brininess olives um kind of a it, it's big but it's 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 really subtle and just sort of delicate and nice and floral and a little bit perfumey oh god this is addictive i mean it's just I mean, once you could pass the sort of, you know, alcoholic weight of this, it's just gorgeous, um, frankly. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this as well, and we'll do another round with these. Let's do three. Yeah, I'll do five. Okay, back to the, the um, plantation OFTD. Um, so I hopefully I haven't added too much water to this. Again, it gets... It does not like water very much. You have to be very careful. On the nose, it's sort of, uh, you're getting, it kind of flattens out a little bit. There's, it's kind of like a prune juice note coming now, like with a little bit of that sort of dried orange thing again. I mean, not, not bad. It, the ash is really t coming out and taking over, honestly. It's sort of prune juice and ash. Um, on the palate, once you proof it down, not that bad. Very peppery, very ashy. Um, dominated by uh, yeah, still the still the dried fruit thing, a little rusty. A little metallic, a little short in the mouth. Um, but, you know, I mean, for something that's meant to provide backbone to punch and stuff and be sold for 30 bucks, um, this is actually not a bad sipper. Um, a little, little more cinnamon, a little more Christmas spice. Nothing special, but it's really sort of dominated by dried fruit. And ash. Um, so I previously scored this 82 and a half, or 82 minus. I'm sorry. Um, I, I like pluses and minuses. I'm sorry. Um, I see no reason to change that score. Let's let's go 82 minus. Um, no shame in that. That's pretty good for this this price range, and um, it'll make a hell of a strong like, you know, um, rum and coke or whatever the hell you want to put into it. Thank you, Plantation. Thank you. Good rum. Um, okay, moving on to the more serious contenders. Okay, Old Grandad. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to move this guy out of the way. Really opens beautifully with water. I mean, this is this is just... I mean, the wood smoke really comes. It just smells like hardwoods, like we're barbecuing right now. It's um, like, like okay, the tea note is still there, but it's really just like like oak smoke, obviously. You throw a little bit of um, like pecan and maple in there. Um, maybe just a hair bit of a uh, hair bit of a pickery, not too much. Um, no mesquite. We're not. We're not in Texas. Uh, cherry wood, maybe. It's, and beyond that, it's. I mean, it's, it, this is actually sort of beautifully balanced. Um, just a little bit of of. Um, oh, it's not. It's not really sugar. It's. Oh, no, let's let's just go dem demerara sugar coming through. Um, but but it's also just like very dominated by campfire stuff like leaves and twigs and smoke and hardwood and more tea um and that slight juniper note again that slight herbalness um 
This is a terrific nose. Um, on the on the palate. Okay, kind of the same thing. Tea and kind of liquid wood smoke. Black pepper, uh, again, very tannic, very drying. Goes throughout the mouth. Um, long, long finish. Um, it also sweetens up a little bit, like the that sort of honeydew honey note, that sort of slightly bitter honey that kind of climbs up to the, to the forefront. Um, But, but the juniper, the gin thing, the junipery thing also comes for it. A little bit, a little bit the dill thing too. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm chewing on a, on a Christmas tree right now and I'm enjoying it a little bit. A little cinnamon, a uh, little nutmeg coming through. That's nice. Uh, woody. I mean, you're true and you're true in tree bark here. I mean, it's this is not shy on the wood. Um, a little bready too, actually. Sort of old sourdough bread. Now that I'm now that I'm um, now that I've added some water, and that long dry finish. Um, this is terrific. Um, I'm gonna give this 86. This is great. Uh, but. Is it better than the humble Ray and nephew? Uh, is is the question on the nose? Okay, this has just become like whipped cream. And the, the vegetable notes are still there, but and, and also the, a little bit of olive juice. So take take your not whipped cream, like like marshmallow, you know, uh, fluff. Mix your marshmallow fluff in with some 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 potatoes, and. Uh, um, and some olives, yum, and uh, that's kind of what you're getting here. Maybe some, yeah, that plantain thing again, a little bit, very floral, um, a little more peppery, uh, kind of like just a wet foliage note, a little funk coming through now, a little bit of that sort of, you know, estery thing, but not too much. This is this is very. Um, uh, uh, it holds itself back. It's, it's sort of, it's delicate. It's not gonna, you know, come forward and punch you in the face. So, I mean, this it's it's lovely. Um, on, on the palate, mm -hmm. Oh, it gets much more sweet and much more sort of the, the white pepper comes out all over the place. This is actually also dry, but it's it's um, it's quite fizzy at the same time. It's almost um, oh, what is it? it's like it's a little little bit of a sparkling wine note almost. Um, like have you ever had like um, sparkling riesling sect um, um, from Germany? This is a little bit like this is a little bit uh, on, along that line. A little like. Chimney soot, um, plantain skins again, more olives, just very balanced, very delicate, soft, oh, delicious too. I'm gonna try this with a clean palate. You know, I gave this an, in an earlier review, I think it was the first one I did, an 86 plus. And again, I don't see any reason to change it. These are neck and neck. I mean, um, in terms of the, the, the palate, they're very close. Uh, in, in, ter in terms of the nose, they're very close. In terms of the palate, this one I think pulls ahead just a bit, but I have to go ring the doorbell, so I'll be right back. Sorry, that was um, that was lunch. Um, okay, where was I going with this? So, So I could easily see someone you know, taking this over over this. Um, for me, this this just has a little bit more going on on the palate. 
Um, so, so you know, I would go with this, but just just by a little bit. Here's the thing: both of these two seem to me like to walk over everything else in the price. I mean, give me like, you know, show me an Irish whiskey or a Scotch you can get for thirty bucks, and it, 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 you just murder them. Um, tequila and mezcal probably stand up a little bit better, but I mean, still, it's just not going to be pretty. Here's the thing. And here's a message to take away on, on all this. You know, OGD 114 is kind of an outlier and it's kind of legendary for that. Like, that, like I would love to be educated if someone knows alternatives, but if you're looking for something of this strength and this quality for the same price range, I don't know if there's anything else out there that sort of compares to this thing. Um, with Ray and Nephew, if you're willing to, to go up to 30 bucks or sort of that around 30 buck price range. And again, remember, this is like 24 in my area. Um, there's tons and tons of unaged rums of very high quality, um, at least as high as this, if not, you know, better. Um, that's kind of where the value is right now, right? Because, I mean, rum is, you know, um, it's, it, you know, you lose a lot of it in in, um, in the aging process, which is the angel share. Um, uh, uh, and uh, the deals are not really in the aged stuff. The deals right now, at least it, as I see it, are in the unaged stuff. Um, and you can, you know, if you want some wood, just just have some bourbon. I mean, for God's sake. If you want an explorer, go drink some some white rum. For God's sake, this is twenty four bucks. If you don't like it, it'll make you some really great mojitos. Um, and that's kind of all I gotta say. So um, eighty two minus, but. You know, for what it is, not a bad sipper, actually. Um, 86, fantastic, but I'm going to give the edge to this guy, 80, 86 plus, and that's kind of all I got. Um, these are just terrific. Just, I mean, 30 bucks, bros. I mean, you know, um, that's kind of all I got. I'm signing off. Thanks for watching, and cheers.